Hello and welcome to this new episode of the WCO Integrity Web Series hosted by the Anti-Corruption and Integrity Promotion Program. As you know, our purpose here is to invite customs experts from around the world and shed some lights on issues relating to integrity in customs. This week, we will focus on internal affairs, and to do so, we have here with us today Alan Azer, Senior Analyst, Security and Professional Standards Directorate at Canada Border Services Agency. Hello, Alan, and thank you for the opportunity to discuss this important and interesting topic. In lieu of a short introduction, I think we could first talk about preventive vigilance. It is an approach followed by customs administrations to eliminate or reduce the occurrence of corruption, misconduct, or malpractice practice. This preventive vigilance is often driven by internal control activities led down under the WCO Revised Darisha Declaration, Audit and Investigation Key Factor. Exactly. And internal control activities encompass a collective effort between entities which play a critical role in ensuring the integrity of officials, processes, systems, and the institution. Internal affairs, internal audit, and external audit enable administrations to strengthen their governance improve stewardship and enhance organizational performance. All of this fosters client service orientation, as well as reinforce the fight against corruption and the promotion of integrity. So let's discuss what the different contributions of key internal control bodies are. Absolutely. First, internal affairs makes reference to a specialized group having a core responsibility to investigate cases of corruption, misconduct, or malpractice, as well as other important aspects of preventive vigilance. Now, this may include uh, processing and verifying declarations of assets, conducting pre-employment integrity checks, conducting ethics and integrity related training, spearheading integrity projects, and conducting corruption risk mapping. Alan, I think we can also underline that internal affairs may also operate under different names, such as professional standards, professional responsibility, internal investigation, or inspectorate general. That's correct. In all cases, their mandate is primarily threefold, prevention of non-ethical behaviors, education of customs officials and stakeholders, and taking action in cases of allegations or suspicions of corruption, misconduct, or malpractice. And what is the place of audit in all of this? Okay. Well, internal audit is an independent appraisal function that brings a systematic evidence-based approach to assessing and improving the effectiveness of risk management strategies and practices, management control frameworks, systems and practices, and governance process within an administration. So their focus is on quality assurance, integrity of processes, as well as practices and continuous business improvement. On the other hand, external audit is an independent examination function that provides support to the legislative and oversight needs of the government. Its work emphasizes making a difference to the public by promoting answerable, honest, and productive government that reflects a commitment to sustainable development. It carries out independent audits and examinations that provide objective information, advice, and assurance to the government. Now, this is done to promote fair and frank accounting of government stewardship, efficiency and productivity, cost effectiveness, the collection of revenues, and compliance with authorities. Their mission is to provide independent information, assurance, and advice regarding the stewardship of public funds. Thank you, Alan. Uh, now that we've made clear what we are talking about, let's see what it means for WCO members. Firstly, in response to needs they expressed, the WCO developed a compendium on best practices in internal control. Later on, within the context of a WCO anti-corruption and integrity promotion program for customs, which supports more than 20 WCO members across five WCO regions, several members identified the strengthening of their internal controls and specifically internal affairs as a key priority. They are striving either to create such a capacity and others are seeking member expert assistance to strengthen, reinforce, consolidate, or further enable their existing internal affairs functions. And in response, a draft training curriculum and select training materials have been developed under the WCOIC program to promote preventive vigilance through internal controls and specifically internal affairs. Alan, you have greatly contributed to developing this curriculum, so please tell us more about it. Definitely. The draft training curriculum and initial training material were indeed developed by the WCO ASIP program experts in close collaboration with 
program partner countries and internal affairs experts from WCO, WCO members supporting the ASIP program. This includes Brazil, Canada, Mauritius, and the United States. Working together, the curriculum was developed around foundational advanced and tailor-made training activities to respond to specific needs of administrations. Emphasis is made on sharing experiences, best practices, views, and perspectives. Foundational level training has been developed and piloted in many member countries participating in the WCO ASIP program. This training aims at emphasizing the key internal affairs function building blocks, as well as taking stock of the level of maturity of the internal affairs function. An internal affairs expert working group is currently developing additional advanced training materials. How do you make this work for such a diverse membership as needs from one country to another can be so different? I cannot emphasize enough the need for a flexible model that addresses these diverse needs. It is not a linear approach as it allows for different entry points. For instance, we have worked with ASIP beneficiaries on the reinforcement of their corruption, misconduct, and malpractice reporting mechanisms, on enabling their disciplinary panels to reach fair and consistent decisions, and on the consolidation of their administrative investigation process. Thank you for all of this, Alan. Those three areas actually are topics we will each deeper tackle in future episodes of the ASIP Integrity web series. Thank you everyone for listening to this new episode and we'll see you soon. Bye.